Back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up. No, 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 no. Back up, back up. We out here giving, giving toys to the kids, you heard? Today is um, like Christmas in DR, so we got a bunch of toys to give to the kids. What's good, friends and family? Mr. Flip Flop. So, February of 2019, I started the business video, part one. Then March, part two. Uh, the process was supposed to take 90 days. It took 120 days. Um, I'm just getting back to you guys now because I've been, as you guys know, I'm really busy. Uh, so, the company's constituted. This is, this is the one that took the 120 days. Okay, so that's, once you have this book, and your stamp, you're constituted. You're able to run a legal business in Dominican Republic. So I have four of these now. At the moment, I'm working on a fifth one at the moment, right now. So first off, shout to Ken and Blake for rolling with me at the beginning of this video. Uh, on All Kings, Three Kings Day, Epiphany, we went out and gave toys in the projects. Shout to them for trusting me when I told them we'll be safe in the projects. So shout to those guys rolling with me on uh, the six. So... Back to what I was telling you guys before. The two most important things in having business in the DR, well, any business, period, but in the DR mainly, especially if you're a, you're, you're a non-Dominican, is an accountant and a lawyer. Have to have those two things. If you don't have those two things, you don't want to do business because that's how everything goes left, how, how things fail, how um, you'll sit there and end up paying people you don't, you don't have to pay, and uh, basically get lawsuits and all that other stuff. So accountant and lawyer. Okay, lawyers keep you legal, accountants hand, make sure your money's right. You know, as far as what you got to pay certain employees, days off, hours work, extra hours, overtime, um, holidays. I'm open all the time, so on holidays I got to pay double time. My accountant makes sure that's all on, on point. Um, you know, if, 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 if it's not right, then your accountant and lawyer are not doing their job, but you have to have that. Um, and it's honestly a waste of time to not have an accountant and lawyer. That's how most businesses fail. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it costs me a little extra money per month to be totally legitimized. But as fast as Flip Flop went up, I had to protect myself and make sure that no one could mess with me. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I pay more, but there's not a single person could walk up to Flip Flop. Anybody can come mess with my business. So, excuse me. You know, it's worth it. Whereas other, other situations, someone will run up real quick and... Oh, go check that guy out. Go check what he's doing out over there and cause problems for your business. And it's happened to people before. Okay, so pros and cons of doing business in DR. The pros are you're in paradise. You're doing business in paradise. Uh, you get to employ the locals, so you help out, you know, get, get, getting people jobs. Um, the freedom. There's a lot of freedom down here. So, um, you know, you got to be on point. So the, I would say the cons are only... Having to be around your business a lot, you know, as you guys know, I'm at flip-flop almost all the time. If I'm not there, I'm running errands or just on an adventure somewhere, but that's few and far between. I'm always handling business. Um, and just the overall, you know, you get a lot of hate. And I'm not mean haters. I mean hate as far as other businesses not being as successful. Hate as far as locals not being happy that you're doing good. You know, they, they hate, hate that they didn't think of that idea, whatever the case may be, uh, depending on whatever the business is. Now, also, I'm going to remind you guys. If you, have to, if you want to do a business in DR, you also have to decide, tourist business or local business. As you, know, you guys know, Flip Flop Sports Bar is a tourist business. So they just raised the minimum wage to 11200 I believe it is, per month. 
So minimum wage went up in the tourist sector. I don't believe it went up in the um, in the normal business. I believe it's still seven or eight thousand pesos, something like that. So that that varies as well. Which your accountant and your lawyer will handle that part for you and let you know what type of business you are, um, who you're catering to, as far as what area you're in. This is Susu so is a tourist area, so I cater to tourists. I cater to everybody, but tourists are the uh, are the I'm in the tourist sector basically. So that's what that is. Um, one second. Also, I told you guys before the 90 day rule, and this is something you really have to vet your employees on because there are people that will work for 90 days just to get that lump sum of money at the end. They'll give you great work for 90 days and then they'll say, I don't want to work no more. <clears throat> get that night, get that 90 day uh, liquidation, which is unemployment and they're good to go. So you kind of got to vet your employees. As you guys know, I pr focus on service and stuff like that. So I can kind of vet my people earlier than most. But you do want to vet people because you can tell who is there to collect the check and who's there to actually work. Um, and, you know, I, someone made a comment previously about paying police. I don't pay anybody. You know, you want to help some police out, stuff like that, donate to the cause, cool. But they can't help your business as far as issues. And if you have issues with your business, you need your lawyer and your accountant. That's who can help you with your business. Um, also... You have to understand that you will be paying Social Security and insurance for every employee once a month. You have to pay it all. I just paid um, Infotep. You have to pay them once a month the insurance and Social Security for each employee. Uh, by the way, almost every business is supposed to. They don't all, but you have 18% tax, which is the, the, the tax in the country. And then you have a 10% legal tax. What that is, is the actual tip. Um, I don't charge it. I expect you guys to tip off of the great service. Most businesses charge it and don't give it to the employees. Each employee is supposed to get 10% of the profits. Most places don't give it to them and they charge you anyway. I don't charge it and I let them earn their tips. So it, it works a different way. But 18% you have to charge. The 10% is optional. But the 10%, most people, as I said, most businesses charge and the employees never see it. As I said, I have to be legit to protect myself, protect the business. Um... So things you deal with, I mean, case in point, I'm a very creative person. As you guys know, the, the slogans, um, the world is flip-flop, the funny signs you see at the bar. As many as you know, I started saying two years ago, home of the famous wings. We have the, fam most, the best wings in the Dominican Republic. Well, this is a copycat league like the NFL. And I'll, I'll backtrack real quick. When I had the spot in 7, um, 718 in Puerto Plata. I had this amazing Brugal special, one for two at a certain time, blah, blah, blah. I was killing it. My spot in Puerto Plata was small, but it was, it, was, it was jumping. So one day my employees called me, and they go, hey, you got to come around the corner. I said, okay, cool. I go around the corner, and the biggest spot in Puerto Plata has a billboard with my special on it. My employees were pissed. I was in awe. I was like, wow. You know, that's great. They're like, you're not mad? I said, no, I'm flattered that these people who I can't even compete with would steal my special and steal my slogan. My slogan at 718 was, where everyone is VIP. Donde todos son VIP. They went, took my, took my special and said, the home of the real VIP. So it was cool, but it shows you that there's no creativity down here amongst locals and expats. So they jump on a bandwagon and try to just follow your wave. Which is normal, I guess. Um, it's just weird to me. You know, I, I'm like, I can be creative. Why can't you? So then, as I said, with the flip-flop, I focused on wings, right? Now, every single restaurant in Sasua has a sign that says, Best Wings on the North Coast, Best Wings in DR. It's amazing, but that's some things you have to deal with down being in this country. You can't trademark or copyright a slogan or all those things down here, so... Or at least I don't think you can, so it is what it is. I started the Famous Wings, so everybody has Famous Wings signs on it. So I guess if you heard of Famous Wings and someone points you in the flip-flop direction, if you see that sign, you'll stop in. So it's smart on their part, I guess. But no one, no one can compete with the Wings and flip-flop, I guess. So it is what it is. So you have to deal with that. I mean, the reality is you also have to deal with employees getting along. You know, that's something I, that's, that is really hectic. Employees, 
how can I say this? You'll have men versus women. You'll have Haitian versus Dominican. Excuse me. Um, so it, it, it goes certain ways, but what you try to do is create a, what I try to do at least, create a work zone where everybody gets along, where we're all family. I preach to my employees all the time, you don't have to like each other. But when you're here, you're family. When you clock out after that, I don't give a damn if you don't give each other water when you're thirsty. But here we're family. And so far it works. Everybody kind of gets along. I've had instances where we had a cancer in the, in the kitchen maybe or cancer in the bar and I had to ship somebody out. You know, those things happen. So basically, to, to sum it all up in a nut, get your company constituted, okay? Once you have it constituted, you have your stamp, your RNC number, which is your basically your business ID. Uh, get your employees. Make sure you're paying them the right pay scale, depending on the type of business you have. Your accountant will help you with that. Your lawyer and your accountant should be taking care of all your paperwork. As I told you guys before, it's, it's anywhere around 1500 to 1800 US, depending on how much you need to get it constituted. Um, that all, it's all levels. Then there's other ways to get constituted where you're not actually running a business, but you can get a legal license to run a business. There's different levels to getting constituted. This is actually to have an actual physical business. Um, your insurance, Social Security, your accountant will handle that. You know, to make sure you, you, every employee has uh, Social Security and insurance being paid. And know that in 90 days, you are responsible to pay your employees uh, liquidation, which is unemployment. I've actually had employees that, a the highest I've ever paid liquidation was about $1,000. A little over $1,000. But that employee was with me for over a year. So it all depends. There's, there's a formula to use. The length of time worked, what you owed in vacation, what you owed him for holiday pay. So also remember vacation, they get two weeks vacation after a year service. Um, they could take it any time. And then Christmas time, they get double pay, which has to be paid before the 15th of December. So Christmas time, they get double their salary. You pay them their regular, like on the 15th, they get half their pay. Then they get a whole month's payment with that payment. So it's double pay in Christmas time. And then as I said, they get two weeks vacation. So most of the stuff you won't be dealing with if you have your lawyer and your accountant, but these are things you need to know. All right. So I'm going to do a live. If you guys have any questions, hopefully in the next couple of days about business tips and business questions, get at me, Mr. Flip Flop. Love all you guys. I'm out.